Hey guys, what's up? Today it's time to talk about Needs of America. 10 JRPGs, hidden gems that need more attention, more love, published by Needs of America. Now, to avoid confusion, some of these games were not released by Needs America in Europe, and as a matter of fact, a lot of RPGs were published by Needs America in Europe, but they were published by Atlus of America in North America. Like, for example, a lot of RPGs that I covered in the Atlas videos were actually published by Nice America in Europe. Weird, huh? Anyway, I just needed to clarify that. 10 JRPGs Hidden Gems published by Nice America in North America. Alright, let's begin! Number 10, The Witch and the Hundred Knight 1 and 2. These two were developed by Nipponichi Software themselves. First one was released on the PS3, later enhanced on the PS4, and the second one was exclusive to the PS4. But like I showed before, there's a bundle with both also on PS4, digitally. They're top-down view action RPGs where you control the little guy called the Hundred Knight. He's usually brought to life by a witch with different purposes. In the first game, Metalia is looking for revenge against her rival, the witch Malia, to control the swamp. In the second game, Emily works for an anti-witch organization, but since her sister is possessed by the witch Chalka, she needs to join forces with her, including the Hundred Knight. If you ask me, I think the second game is slightly better in terms of controls, combat and gameplay, but the truth is they're both quite similar and just as good. They can be a little bit repetitive as the traversing areas are somewhat long, but if you like the action here, that shouldn't pose a problem. Definitely recommended these two. Number 9. Fairy Fencer F I don't think this game is as hidden anymore, considering it's already on four different modern systems, but still, it's kind of unknown considering some people reject it for being a compiled hard RPG. I won't deny the story's dumb, with the silly characters and fan service galore, but it's all in a good sense. It's honestly one of the best comedies I've seen in a JRPG. The one I played is precisely the PS3 version, which is published by Nice America. Other versions were published by Idea Factory themselves when they started publishing their own games, finally. Several composers did the music in this game, including Nobuo Uematsu, hard to believe I know. Your goal is to find the fury weapons to stop a possible war between the goddess and the evil god. The battle system is like an improved version of any Neptunia game out there. Players have to position their characters for melee attacks to have the enemies inside their range. Once you do, you'll have to perform a few button combos lashing out at them. Magic spells are bound by a similar movement regimen. Once you transform, though, you can do some massive damage to your enemies. Half of the game is kinda easy, but the second half will be a difficulty spike, so you'll have to start grinding eventually. Overall, this is a pretty decent game and one of the best developed by Compile Heart. Number 8 God Wars Future Past been a while since I last talked about this one, a grid-based tactical RPG with an overall view for the maps. It was released on the PS4 and PS Vita simultaneously until its expanded version on the Switch. Developed and published by Katokawa Games, but published to the rest of the world by Nice America. In God Wars, you start with a few characters until more and more join your party, however, you can only have 6 during battle. It's very important that you get used to at least 6 of them because non-participant characters don't get any experience. The game has an easy mode, but it's quite challenging, so grinding is required often. A wide variety of jobs are available, but you'll have to slowly unlock them as you make progress. Characters can equip several of them at the same time. Story follows a journey by Princess Kaguya in order to find her missing mother after escaping from the Empire. It's heavily inspired by ancient Japanese folklore involving gods, spirits and demons alike. No matter the version you play, this is a great game, one of the very few modern strategy RPGs that is an indie nowadays. Number 7. Grand Kingdom 
This one is a campaign-driven RPG developed by Monochrome Corporation, company created by Tomohiko Deguchi. He worked for Vanillaware and directed Grand Knight's history on the PSP, so this game is a spiritual successor of that Japanese exclusive. You will play Grand Kingdom through one big campaign during a war, controlling a band of mercenaries. Under a guild banner, you'll be tasked to hire, customize and train a variety of class warriors to fight during battle. Missions will be arranged throughout these wide maps where the exploration shall develop. Encounters will proceed on these 2.5D areas bound by layers. Only up to 6 characters can go to these missions and the same ones participate in these battles. A balanced party is always recommended, but you can just try different groups and formations. What you need to do is focus on positioning, as moving around and attacking are bound by action points. Same penalties apply to your enemies. So while being a turn-based RPG, it's highly strategic, which is the whole point of the game. There's also an online mode where you can align yourself with a nation, but I never tried it. Beautiful and complex Grand Kingdom is a great RPG, only available on PS4 and PS Vita. Number 6. Generation of Chaos – Pandora's Reflection Several games exist in the Generation of Chaos series, though we only got three on the PSP. The one I liked the most was the digital-only Pandora's Reflection. It was developed by Idea Factory and Steam Entertainment before Compile Heart ever existed. It's a dark, real-time strategy RPG that I really enjoyed. Claude is an alchemist that is seeking for a cure to the curse endangering her sister's life. Together, they'll travel across a barren, post-apocalyptic wasteland, getting caught in the middle of a sinister plot. Battles take place in these overworld areas, where you have to select the directions you want for your characters to move to, contact with towns will trigger NPC conversations or items, contact with the bases will make them yours. You will be able to redeploy your characters there if you want to, but also prevent enemies from redeploying theirs. Goals will usually be to capture all bases or kill the boss. Upon meeting an enemy, a small skirmish will occur where you'll have to select the right weapon and click certain buttons at the right time. Trust me, it's not as complicated as it may seem. I really dig this battle system, as it reminds me of the Grow Lancer series. Very good game here, among the best, published by Nice America. Number 5. Battle Princess of Arcadia Another digital-only game I've talked about many times before is Battle Princess of Arcadia on the PS3. Plume is a clumsy princess tasked with protecting the kingdom from an ongoing menace. In the middle of a war, she and her several companions will have to train themselves, but also participate in skirmishes. You have three battle systems here, all played in 2D. First, the side-scrolling missions. All you gotta do is kill everything in sight and reach the end. The skirmishes rely more on a triangle system, so using the right weapon type of character is strongly advised. You'll have to kill several platoons and their leaders during this. The boss fights can be pretty brutal. You have to weaken their shields first so you can properly attack or even perform a badass super skill. For all three types of combat, you can only take three playable characters with you, able to switch between them at any time. Great game, excellent combat, very silly plot, but overall pretty likable. Number 4. Soul Nomad and the World Eaters This one will no longer be an exclusive to the PS2. Soon, it will be remastered worldwide alongside Phantom Brave on the Switch. It's called Prini Percent's NIS Classics Volume 1, which means there will be other volumes with more NIS remasters in the near future. Awesome! Anyway, this is another tactical RPG where you move on grids, but instead of controlling one character, you have entire groups of them. Obviously, each with their own leader. Leader dies in battle, the entire group retreats. No permadeath here, don't worry. So these battles, you have no direct control over them. All you can do is manipulate the formations in the menu while unlocking them or buying them. The more you progress in the game, the more room formations you'll have, and that means more groups of characters available in battle. But before going into them, you can select the behavior of these characters or the skill attack they'll execute, like in combos, for example. And the story has multiple routes and endings depending on your choices, but you gotta beat the game once to unlock the dark route. All you gotta do is journey with your silent protagonist, male or female, possessed by the evil world eater, Gig. It's comedic, sure, but it's also quite dark, and I really enjoyed it. Number 5. 
Number 3. Spectral Souls Two games were released on the PS2, only in Japan! And we only got the second one when it was ported to the PSP. Later, versions for mobile devices were released worldwide. Published by Nice America and developed by Idea Factory, Spectral Souls is a strategy RPG very reminiscent of its time. It follows the story of a war feud between several races, particularly the demon army in the human empire. You'll take control of three protagonists, each part of a different side of the war, fighting for their own motives. Matter of fact, you'll be switching regularly to these characters every few missions. It's a very well-written plot, dark and mature. Customization is mostly based on increasing status when you level up, also equipping a variety of weapons and accessories that you can pay money to improve. The game's a natural born grindfest and it's very, very hard, so this one I recommend only to players experienced in tactical RPGs. But it's quite solid, and in fact, it's one of my favorite RPGs on the PSP. Number 2. Manakimia 2 Fall of Alchemy I decided to include this one here because most people seem to only know the first game, barely anyone knows it got a sequel on the PS2. Yeah, direct sequel, by the way, but with new characters and new plot, although taking place in the same school as before. However, here you'll be able to choose between two protagonists and each will have their own party, story progression and different missions, which means it has strong replay value in order to play the game with both. Like most Atelier-like games, missions will revolve around exploration, gathering and synthesis. In fact, getting better weapons and accessories including the skill system relies on that, but this one has a strong focus on combat and more traditional RPG elements, although you will still be delving a bit into the school simulation. It has an excellent battle system, side by side in 2D, where you can abuse the alchemy skills, do awesome combos and switch characters mid-battle. And combat music is mind-blowing, I can't believe they pulled out some really key cast metal themes in there. Excellent game, better than its predecessor in my opinion. Number 1. Langrisa Remix 1 and 2 this duology is a remake of the first two Langreaser games on the Mega Drive and Genesis, first one formerly known as Warsong. Karokawa Games compiled them so Nice America could publish them on most modern platforms. These are RPGs that are sunk in war, usually led by evil puppeteers behind kings and empires. Protagonists must get the Langreaser, the Sword of Light, to be able to fight against them. Several routes and endings are available depending on your actions and your choices. Each one is fairly short and you can do a lot of them in one run as the game lets you jump back and forth between missions. I wish more RPGs with different paths had this option, honestly. Battles in Langrisser 1 and 2 are grid based in large area maps affected by terrain. You control the commanders directly but you can also hire mercenaries to aid them in battle if you want to. By selecting an enemy to attack, a skirmish will start and the results will depend on a triangle system like in Fire Emblem. Your characters can also evolve their current job or alter it to get a slightly different set of skills. You know, these two games are brilliant, one just as good as the other, and definitely the best hidden gems in this video. Alright guys, those were my picks for today's video, 10 hidden JRPG gems published by Miss of America. There will be more Needs of America videos coming in the near future, this is an ongoing series, and maybe later another company and so on. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!